Hi, in this video I'll give you the single biggest reason why most people fail at becoming extremely good at alternate picking. Because most people can, or all people can. It's simply a matter of mechanics, but there's a mistake we make, all of us, when we try to learn this technique, and that's what this video is about. Once you know what it is, you can stop doing it, so you can get what you want on this instrument. Secondly, once we make this mistake, we make other mistakes as a follow-up to the first mistake, which means that we try to come up with ways of getting there faster that doesn't really work. It might work you know, some of the time in the beginning, giving us these little flashes of, oh, I can do this, right? And then we start going into these shortcuts that really hurt us in the long run and keep us from getting to where we want to go. And we're going to discuss something called pick angling where instead of playing parallel to the string, completely parallel, where if you t take your pick and just put it on the string, uh, that's parallel. If you just do this here, you angle it a little bit. And I do that for some purposes. Uh, you can also misuse it and really destroy your alternate picking practice. So listen up. The first mistake we make, and that we all make, and the biggest one of them all, because it's the one that hurts us the most, is we completely, absolutely, completely underestimate the amount of repetitions we need and the, the amount of focus we need to have in order to master this technique. It's easy to master, but if we think it's, it, it takes, you know, you know, like if, if I told you, hey man, you're going to learn to drive a stick shift car and it only takes you five minutes. Most people learn this in five minutes, right? So they get into the car, I tell them where the different pedals are and the clutch and the accelerator and the stick. And then, you know, after five minutes, people usually get it and they can drive just fine, you know. And you stop trying to do that. What's going to happen after five, 10, 15, 20 minutes of going, <laughs> right? You're going to feel like an idiot. You're going to think, hey, there's something wrong with me. I don't have the talent. Or maybe I'm using the wrong approach. Or maybe there's something wrong with the car, right? We start analyzing and overanalyzing because we think there's something wrong, but there's nothing wrong. It, it, the, the only thing wrong is that we have this story that alternate picking is like learning anything else, right? It's like learning how to ride a bike. It's like learning how to drive a car or you brush your teeth and, you know, but it's nothing like anything else. It, it, because we combine two different opposing forces. One is precision uh, and a, a scary amount of precision. And every, everybody can do this and precision. And then on the other hand, speed, right? So it's like trying to engrave a ring with tiny little letters, right? Really precision work, but you have to do it at an enormous amount of speed. Those two things don't go together, but we still do them anyway. So also you're picking is like a, a bee that can't fly because it's too heavy, right? A bumblebee, is that the name? Um, but so what do we do about it? Well, first of all, we adjust our mindset, our expectations of how many repetitions we need to put in to the actual reality. Once we have that, then we know the road ahead, right? And then we don't have to feel like idiots, first of all. We don't have to feel like we don't have the talent or the skill or the ability to even do it. And secondly, we don't need to go, you know, looking in the forest for solutions for a problem that isn't there. So we don't need to say, oh, uh, 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 and do all kinds of, you know, try and uh, maybe there's a trick to it, right? We, we try to, uh, do I have to use my whole arm? How in the world would you, right? Which brings me to the next thing here, which is pick angling. What we do, so, you know, naturally, if you look at my hand right now, uh, I pick angle just a little bit because, you know, we hold the pick like this. We don't hold the hand and the arm like this. So the pick would be completely parallel to the string. This would make me play like that. If I had to be completely parallel, you know, like pick, putting the pick on the string like that. But because I, I'm holding my hand like this, it's natural to have just a little bit of angling on the pick, right? It comes just naturally. I'm just holding the pick. I'm not trying to angle, but that appears. Once I get up here though, I get closer to, to completely parallel. And I don't like that because that changes the whole feel of the string. Once I get to completely parallel and I have a little angle here, so I have a little angle on the top strings naturally, right? As I go here, you can see the pick is more parallel to the string like that, right? That's the angle on the top E string and that is no angle to completely parallel to the E. That's natural if I don't do anything. So as I go up the strings here, 
I have my PC bone, which is that little knuckle here uh, on your wrist, just at the end of your uh, pinky. Uh, and I place that where the low E string meets the bridge, approximately, right? And once I get up here, I, I tend to pull my thumb in just a little bit, because if I do that, then the, the, the pick gets really angled, right? And so if I do this, and as I go up the strings, I have a little bit of an angle on my thumb. See how it, it, it goes up there, right? And that produces the same, the same angle to the strings constantly. So every string is the same. But there's another element here. This is all very small details. And that's the fact that this string here is like a, like a string in a fence, right? It's hard, it's, it's small, it's tiny, right? That high E string, while the low E string is round like a tube, right? And when we're talking about these microscopic things that happens with the pick and the strings, that tube down here and that hard line up here is really a huge difference to the hand and to the feel of the pick. So what you do, what I do is I angle the pick just a little bit more to, in order to compensate for that. Because if my pick angle is very steep here, then that string feels a little bit like this one down here, right? So instead of just compensating for that movement here, I'm exaggerating it just a little bit. And as I go down to the lower strings, you know, you can sometimes see when I'm doing a run and I'm playing the lower strings that my thumb is like this to get the right angle. Because what happens when we're pick angling? Well, just imagine that you had to play, uh, you know, when you play with a coin, you get a little bit of that effect. But if, let's say you, pl you were to play with a square, right? That you had a little, your pick looked like this. And you couldn't play, you couldn't pick with the corners. You had, to, you had to pick with that side. Well, then you had to absolutely have a total parallel to the string because you would be scooping that string with the flat side all the time, right? Any little angle would make you, you know, it would, you, know you would mute the string because you would pick the string with the, and then the rest of the side. You can try it, right? It feels a little bit like picking with the flat side. You know, if this is the right side, <laughs> right? If I turn it around and I try to pick with this side, right? It feels a little bit like that. But that's the whole reason why a pick looks like, looks like this. It's because so that we're able to have that little angle, right? To the pick, like do this instead of this. Because when we do that, what happens is instead of having that sharp tip, because if I pick just in the surface of the string with this sharp tip, then I get that kind of resistance. As I turn it like this, then suddenly, just imagine the, the, the extreme is to pick like this, right? So instead of picking like this to the string, like, like this, right? I turn my pick around and I pick like this. Then what, what has happened now? Well, now I'm picking with something soft and round, right? It's no longer sharp. This is a big stubby. I do not recommend these when you practice uh, big stubby Dunlop. Uh, when you practice alternate picking because they're very sharp and, and very uh, tough. Uh, they are merciless when it comes to... So, so I recommend the purple uh, uh, Dunlop instead, the two millimeter purple, uh, because it, it's thicker and it has a rounder tip. But that's another thing. So when I'm picking like this, now I get the round tip. I really get the round tip. It's like it's sliding across the string with no effort, right? I do like this and I'm really... I have to use a, a, a high level of precision when I adjust my picking depth. Because if I don't have the same picking depth all the time, that is being punished severely. When I, when I go a little bit deeper, you know, I get a lot more picking resistance. And I can't have, have that. If I want to have that relaxed picking motion, then I need the same kind of resistance every single time from the string. And so if my picking depth isn't ratio sharp, then it's going to be... Uh, how do we compensate for that? Well, there's a lot of ways we do that if we don't have the precision, right? But let's just say if I angle my pick a little bit, I get a little bit off the hook here because now this is the extreme. It gets much less important what picking depth I have because if it's a little too deep, then it doesn't matter that much. It doesn't give me an, that much extra assistance because the picks basically just slides off the string, right? So that's why pick angling can be a shortcut in the beginning. But instead of using that shortcut and taking a merciless pick like this, I did usually go for something thicker. I didn't know why at the time, 
but something thicker like the 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 purple dunlop two millimeter really thick it's so thick that it has a rounded uh tip here which emulates actually pick angling just a little bit i hope that all of this makes sense so instead of doing this i can use a pick that has a round fat round edge but that gives me a sound uh, i can't get these I can't get as much high end in my sound because this, the pick simply slides across the string more than this does. But that's okay, you know, because I'm not, I'm really picking. I can pick parallel to the string or almost parallel to the string. I don't have to pick angle as much to make it happen. So I'm not going to practice bad habits into my playing. If I have to practice with this and, and, and you know, and I use the shortcut of angling it like so I go this also on the top string to get an easier time practicing then suddenly I get thousands of repetitions picking with a steep angle which is not what I want but if I pick with a rounded tip an easier pick you could say then I don't get that habit because I don't have to angle it as much so I really warmly, warmly, warmly recommend that you throw this out the window, or at least, you know, if you got a pick like this, that's stiff, that is thin, that is, uh, it's merciless, right? So any deviation from the optimal picking depth will give you a punishment, and you have to compensate for that by using brute force. You don't want to practice with brute force either, right? So you want a pick that allows you to build your alternate picking skills to the max, right? Without you having to use these shortcuts to get results faster, then choose a pick that goes easier on you. Once you're at the high level with that pick, just change to this and you won't even feel the difference much, right? It'll just be a little bit harder. So that, that's how it's going to feel. So use the right pick when you build your skills and remember, because then you don't have to angle it all the time, right? And build in that bad habit of over angling. <laughs> and then remember that the most uh, important mistake we make is that we we put the alternate picking skills in parallel to other skills that it's nothing like it because we combine precision razor sharp precision with speed and that takes a bit of extra intelligence with the right method using the right kind of method right and you want to do that look forward to seeing you in the next video here until then go get the right pick and uh, and really look at the angling that you uh, that you use when you when you practice alternate picking. See you in the next video.